Good afternoon, Nurin Duvolf. Welcome on VH Berries. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> so fun. I am grateful. How is your day going so far? Um, my day is going good. Um, I have two children. I have a seven-year-old son and I have a five-month-old baby girl. <laughs> so my day is going good. Um, I dropped my son to school. He went to school. Um, I went to... Oops, my ear pod just fell out. One second. Okay, it's back in. Can you hear me? Sorry. Absolutely, okay. absolutely. Um, this is going to be great content for you. <laughs> um, and then I uh, went to a class, a workout class called Bikini Shred. And it's a year-round class because um, it's always bikini season in California. So, um, yeah. I went to that, then came home, did some stuff, read a script, and now I'm here with you. That's fantastic. And talking about the day and the sunlight during that time, I learned that your name, uh, Nurin, actually means the bright shining light. It does. <laughs> it does. And that's what I tell everyone around me, that I am a bright shining light. Um, no, I ever since I was young, um, You know, I've always told people that. I'm like, my name means light. It means girl with light. And um, I grew up with an Indian Muslim background. And um, uh, so my name is actually an Indian Muslim name, Noreen. And Noreen Dvolf, I would actually connect that fact with one of the recurrent elements uh, that is coming in every of your project, I feel, which is grilled meat from the meat brochette on the fancy hat of some characters of West Bank story, or even in Wheel of Fortune, in which you are selling hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. Yep, that's true. <laughs> I would love to discuss about um, Will of Fortune, which is one of your latest projects, a comedy in which you are playing uh, a sellers, as I just mentioned in Max Smith, and in which you are selling those food, but also later in the story, driving the camping car. Yes, Wheels of Fortune is a big, silly, dumb comedy and they would not be offended with me saying that because they told us to describe it that way um it's kind of like talladega nights mixed with um dirt joe dirt from back in the day i don't know if you remember that movie but um it's so funny it's really really funny i try to tell my you know i never tell my friends when i'm in things or my family even and wheels of fortune was one of the movies that i I texted people and I said, look, please watch this movie. It is so funny. And it is so, I, I don't know, I think it's so funny. So I was really happy. I, I auditioned for that and I fought for that and I got that role. That was a great one for me. I, I'm really excited that that's on Netflix. And it's one of the few um, things I've been in that my uh, mother-in-law told me she thinks is very, very funny. So I was happy about that. <laughs> Absolutely. And Nurin Duvolf, can you tell us a little bit more about the story in general, general and about your specific character? Sure. Um, I play a character named Mandy. And Mandy um, is, she, she has two best friends. And she uh, goes on a cross-country journey in a camper Um in order to try to help Bo, her best friend and love interest, win his inheritance from his estranged billionaire father. And um, at one point she was married to uh, another character, Noodle's father, and he was her sugar daddy, and uh, they are since divorced. And so she is Noodle, 
there's three characters. There's Mandy, there's Bo, and there's Noodle. And so she's Noodle's stepmom. So um, things, you know, we want things for Mandy to come full circle so she can have her husband and her stepson Noodle, even though they're all the same age. <laughs> At the end, everything is coming full circle, uh, Nurin the Wolf. And I felt that uh, all along your journey uh, into your project, there are always multiple messages. But one that is very important is always comedy, um, especially, for example, in anger management. I feel that this is one of the very uh, important components of your work. Thank you. Yes. Um, you know, when I started out acting, um, I was doing a lot of movies and some sitcoms. And then I worked for a very long time trying to avoid being on a, on a TV show uh, because I was doing all these fun, big movies. And then all of a sudden, I really, really TV became you know, more fun and more interesting in a way than movies in the last 10 years um, with, you know, Netflix and all these things. And um, it just became that TV was kind of the place to be. And so I was so excited when they told me that it would be a long hundred episode contract that I got uh, to be on anger management. I was actually thrilled at the time because, um, you know, it was a dream come true for me. I've always you know, been a comedian and I've been working and yeah, so I've, I've been working in, you know, I, I wanted to be in a big comedy like that. And obviously, you know, Charlie Sheen with his uh, two and a half men, I was, I was just thrilled to be in that show. And um, I was super lucky to get cast. It was a very competitive show to be in. Um, and I had a blast doing it for a hundred episodes. And Noreen Duvolf, I would love to retrace um, all of the years of your journey because at the very beginning I mentioned a short film called West Bank Story. It was one of your uh, most important projects that happened in the early 2000s at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. That's right. I moved to Los Angeles to pursue a career in acting and um, I moved here in 2003 and I was auditioning for a lot of different things and I would send my picture out and drive around with the book of maps. It's called the Thomas Guide. And I was trying to get auditions and trying to get, you know, a part, something to do as an actor to prove to myself and everyone that, you know, I had made the right decision by moving out to California to pursue my acting career. And um, I auditioned for a short film. It was called West Bank Story. And that was in 2004. And I auditioned for it and I got the lead role of Fatima. And Fat my AirPods keep falling out. You're gonna laugh when you see this video. Um, and Fatima was a uh, was working at the Hamas hut, and uh, she falls in love with an Israeli checkpoint guard who works at the Kosher King, and so they were star-crossed lovers for many reasons, being Palestinian and Israeli, but also because they had competing um, Hamas stands, and. Um, you know, it was a great movie, a wonderful movie. And three years later, it won the Academy Award for Best Short Film. So that was the first movie I ever did. And I was so lucky and like just so lucky that it was such a great movie and it ended up winning an Oscar. And Nurin the Wolf, at that time, uh, you uh, were not expecting all of that uh, outcome after the releases of this short film. How did you live all of the timeline during this specific year, uh, this year in which uh, West Side Story won an Academy Awards? Well, between 2004 and 2007, which is when it won the award, I was doing different movies and different TV shows. I uh, did a movie with Paris Hilton called National Lampoon's Pledge This, which 
um, did not do very well in the theaters. And <laughs> then I was part of a very amazing movie called American Dreams that was directed by the Whites Brothers and um, Hugh Grant starred in that. Um, shortly thereafter, I starred in a pilot written by Mindy Kaling and I played Mindy. Um, it didn't go to series, but I started to um, make a name for myself in comedy and uh, in acting. And I, yeah, I just, I lived job to job and I tried very, very hard. Um, and this is back in 2004, 2005, but I tried so hard not to um, play any really stereotypical roles because I didn't want to be put into a box. And so it was a hard time for me at that time because I did have to say no to a lot of things um, and really pick and choose what I thought would be funniest for me, most out of the box and flashiest. I love to play really flashy, crazy characters. I love to play characters that even if they're only in the show for one scene, you remember that scene, that it's impactful. <laughs> um, and, you know, the last TV job I did was Good Girls. And I did uh, the last two seasons of Good Girls, season three and, no, seasons four and five. Or was it three and four? Gosh, I don't remember now. But I'm in the last two seasons, whatever they are. <laughs> and, um, you know, I played Crystal. And Crystal is like a stripper who is, um, a thief and she's just like she's funny and I and my agents you know they were like do you you know do you want to do this character and I said yeah I do because I I just really I just want to play these characters that you remember and I just think that's the fun of being an actor you know I don't I really I've tried so hard not to play any character that you know I can't that I just think is mundane. I've had opportunities and I just don't think I'll ever end up as one of those characters on a TV show, you know, a procedural TV show, because I just, I just don't think I have it in me to do it. I just don't know if I have the attention span. I have to do something that I think is funny, flashy and hilarious and big. <laughs> it is hilarious, Noreen the Wolf, and I feel that you always went uh, in front of the wind because at the very beginning your environment and family were very strict about uh, your dreams and aspiration and you decided uh, to follow your heart. That's right, I did. I mean, I like I said, <laughs> like I said, I, I, um, you know, I am Indian. Uh, my parents are from near Bombay and um, I am Muslim. And, um, you know, I did grow up in a very conservative home. And I never had anybody tell me like, you know, you would be great at being an actor. You should pursue this. You've always been performing as a child. You know, I've definitely been mentally self-made and financially and physically everything, you know, that I am, I've done myself more or less. Um, I just think it was, it's not part of our culture, you know, to push your daughters or your, you know, anyone to, into acting. And, um, but I was just, you know, I was dead set on doing it. I wanted to be an actress. I, ever since I was young, I was always performing things for people, whoever would watch. And, um, you know, I had a lot of jealousy and sadness when um, I was in Georgia, which is where I went to high school. And, um, you know, a lot of the um, other kids were in theater and they were allowed to be in plays and all that. And my parents wouldn't let me do any of that. So... I don't know, you know, there's an expression which is like if you pull the rubber band back really tight, it goes really far, you know, when you let it go. And so maybe that's, I think, what happened to me is for a long time, I, I had a lot of this stuff brewing inside of me. So then when I moved to L.A., it kind of just exploded out of me. Um, I was just free, you know. Noreen Duvolf, it was growing inside of you. And what were your biggest inspiration during those years to believe in yourself and to uh, look something as an example? 
Um, you know, I'm inspired by so many women in our business and, um, it was hard when I started out cause they're really, you know, there were so many no's based on my ethnicity, which I don't really feel like I, I really come across that way, but that just shows you how far along the business has come needs to go, whatever, because, um, I definitely was told no a lot and it was like, she's too exotic. <laughs> um, she's too, you know, we're just not going to let one of the leads be, you know, someone like her. And, um, that was a hurdle to overcome. So it wasn't really like I looked at someone per se and saw, you know, an inspiration. Obviously there was like Selma Hayek and Penelope Cruz, but you know, they weren't really doing a lot of comedy per se. Um, but there's, you know, I, growing up, I watched Designing Women and I watched The Cosby Show and I watched Roseanne and I loved Roseanne and I loved a lot of those sitcoms. I just loved them. I thought they were so funny. So I always found, um, my sense of humor in alignment with a lot of the sitcoms that I grew up with and, you know, that's what I hope for myself for the future, that I can get back on another show that I really like and that I can be very funny on. And and that's what I live for. You know, I want to make people laugh. And um, yeah. And Noreen Devolf, one of the most funny and uh, memorable uh, scenes were, for example, in anger management. You always had so many colorful costumes from Cleopatra mm -hmm. or other characters that you try to impersonate uh, as Lassay Patel. <laughs> yeah, that was hilarious. <laughs> um, yeah, it was awesome. I had so many costumes and, and that's what's so great about playing this socialite character like Lacey is, and she was up to no good. <laughs> I told one of my agents a while ago, I said, I don't really think I've ever played a character with a job. You know, a lot of my characters are unemployed. Um, they are uh, recently fired, living off their parents, living off their rich husband. It's pretty hilarious. Like, there's definitely a pattern in the characters that I play. And I don't mind it. I think it's funny. I think it's really funny. Actually, I, I pr pretty much like to play characters like that because that's what I like to watch. I like to watch other people do it, too. So if I understood correctly, there is no future ambition to escape from those types of characters. <laughs> um, I mean, maybe I'm too old now to play them. I don't know. Maybe I am. I, maybe I should expand myself. I mean, yes, I always want to play, you know, I want to play other characters. I want to play, but... No, I, I want to do things that I know I'm very good at. I want to do things inside my wheelhouse. And I think people want to see certain things from me. And I'm happy to deliver those, those characters to them. And one of your uh, latest delivery that you just uh, mentioned just before was Good Girl. It was actually the season uh, three and four and not okay. the four and, and fifth <laughs> okay. one. Uh, in which, in which you are um, next to the women that are trying uh, to make a huge plan and something big as a dancer. <laughs> yeah, that, that was another character where I got to be very scheming and manipulative and crazy costumes, amazing costumes. And our costumer, Peggy, um, she really did an amazing job with my costumes. Um, that was an, that was a really fun job for me. I, I felt lucky to be on that show. It's a great show. People love the show. People love the characters. And I think that character, Crystal, they, the writers did give me a lot of depth, you know, there were a lot of just funny, hilarious scenes. And then there were some dark, really dark moments for Crystal, um, really serious moments and sad, some sadness too, you know? 
And I really appreciated them writing for me and writing um, some depth into that character, which could have gone any which way. And it was funny. It was absolutely hilarious to see her lighten up some of the more serious scenes on Good Girls. But then it was really amazing for me personally as an actress to also have that depth of character that I could also um, pull from. So I was lucky with that. That's very interesting, Noreen Duvolf, that uh, depth of character. And uh, I can make a direct connection with comedy because you're considering yourself as a comedian. Does the actual stage and performance uh, in live something that could interest you? You mean doing like Broadway or something like that? like a uh, stand-up comedy in front of a live audience. Okay, so I had a journey with stand-up comedy. <laughs> <laughs> a hidden journey. I had a journey. Um, I did it three times and I didn't enjoy it. I didn't enjoy it. And the reason why is because <laughs> <laughs> I really wanted to do material from my real life. You know, I wanted to talk about my marriage and I wanted to talk about um, my my son and I wanted to make jokes about my parents. And I just felt like I was editing myself a lot because, you know, it's already, it's hard to be, you know, uh, the family of an actor. And I just felt like I really have really good material and I was really scared to use it. I was just really scared to talk about and put my f husband and my son and put everybody out there on that level. So it was hard for me as a, I don't know. It's just hard because it's like you really, what's funny about stand-up comedy is when people really talk about the nitty gritty of life. And then we all go, yeah, we I've been there. I've done that. That's happened to me. And, um, I just wasn't able to, I have the material, I just don't really feel like exposing um, the people I love and <laughs> making fun of them in such a large forum. But yeah, I would love to do it one day if um, they promise never to watch it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they will absolutely promise to not watch it because I totally agree uh, with the fact that Noreen Devolf, when you're, for example, doing comedy, I assume that you have to be all in and ready to make uh, fun of everyone around you and everyone that is very close to you around you. Yeah. And it's hard because you want to, you know, you want to be like, okay, my husband said, you know, blah, blah, blah. And it's just, I don't know, there's something about, um, you know, exposing everyone in your life. There's one thing about exposing yourself, but then there's another thing about exposing your family. And it's funny because I'm, um, there's a very famous rapper and I'm friends with his wife and he's done some songs about her and she was telling me how awful she felt about it. So yeah. I don't know. I don't know if I can do it to my family. <laughs> In any cases, I am looking forward to see that pieces of comedy. Thank you very much, Noreen Duvolf. Thank you so much. You're so funny. <laughs> <laughs>